this chapter I would request all of you to please follow the text and try and read along. Also go through all the illustrations, graphs, tableau resources given in the textbooks. So let us start. This is chapter number 4, Agriculture. India is an agriculturally important country. Two-thirds of its population is engaged in agricultural activities. Agriculture is a primary activity which produces most of the food that we consume. Besides food grains, it also produces raw materials for various industries. Can you name some industries based on agricultural raw material? Moreover, some agricultural products like tea, coffee, spices, etc. are also exported. Types of farming. Agriculture is an age-old economic activity in our country. Over these years, cultivation methods have changed significantly depending upon the characteristics of physical environment, technological know-how and socio-cultural practices. Farming varies from subsistence to commercial type. At present, in different parts of India, the following farming systems are practiced. Subsistence farming. This type of farming is still practiced in few pockets of India. Primitive subsistence agriculture is practiced on small patches of land with the help of primitive tools like hoe, dhow and digging sticks and family community labor. This type of farming depends upon monsoon, natural fertility of the soil and suitability of other environmental conditions to the crop grown. Flash and burn agriculture. Farmers clear a patch of land and produce cereals and other food crops to sustain their family. When the soil fertility decreases, the farmers shift and clear a fresh patch of land for cultivation. This type of shifting allows nature to replenish the fertility of the soil. Through natural processes, land productivity in this type of agriculture is low as the farmer does not use fertilizers or other modern inputs. It is known by different names in different parts of the country. Can you name such types of farming? It is zooming in northeastern states like Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram and Nagaland, Pamlu in Manipur, Deepa in Bastar district of Chhattisgarh and in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Zooming. The slash and burn agriculture is known as Milpa in Mexico and Central America, Konuko in Venezuela, Roca in Brazil, Masol in Central Africa, Ladang in Indonesia, Re in Vietnam. In India, this primitive form of cultivation is called Bevar or Dahiya in Madhya Pradesh, Podu or Penda in Andhra Pradesh, Pamadabi or Koman or Bringa in Odisha, Kumari in Western Ghats, Valre or Vatre in Southeastern Rajasthan, Khil in Himalayan Belt, Kuruva in Jharkhand and Juming in Northeastern region. Rinja lived with her family in a small village at outskirts of Deepu in Assam. She enjoys watching her family members clearing, slashing and burning a patch of land for cultivation. She often helps them in irrigating the fields with water running through a bamboo canal from the nearby spring. She loves the surroundings and wants to stay here as long as she can. But this little girl has no idea about declining fertility of the soil and a family search for fresh a patch of land in next season. Can you name the type of farming Rinja's family is engaged in? Can you enlist some crops which are grown in such farming? Intensive subsistence farming. This type of farming is practiced in areas of high population pressure on land. It is labor intensive farming where high doses of biochemical inputs and irrigation are used for obtaining higher production. Can you name some of the states of India where such farming is practiced? Though, though the right of inheritance leading to the division of land among successive generations has rendered land holding sites uneconomical, the farmers continue to take maximum output from the limited land in the absence of alternative source of livelihood. Thus, there is enormous pressure on agricultural land. Commercial farming. The main characteristic of this type of farming is the use of higher doses of modern inputs. For example, high yielding variety, seeds, chemical fertilizers, insecticides and pesticides in order to obtain higher productivity. The degree of commercialization of agriculture varies from one region to another. For example, rice is a commercial crop in Haryana and Punjab but in Odisha it is a subsistence crop. Can you give some examples 
of crops which may be commercial in one region and may provide subsistence in another region. Plantation is also a type of commercial farming. In this type of farming, a single crop is grown on a large area. The plantation has an interface of agriculture and industry. Plantations cover large tracts of land using capital intensive inputs with the help of migrant laborers. All the produce is used as raw material in respective industries. In India, tea, coffee, rubber, sugarcane, banana, etc. are important plantation crops. Tea in Assam and North Bengal, coffee in Karnataka are some of important plantation crops grown in these states. Since the production is mainly for market, a well-developed network of transport and communication connecting the plantation areas, processing industries and market plays an important role in the development of plantation. Cropping pattern. You have studied the physical diversities in plurality of cultures in India. These are also reflected in agricultural practices and cropping patterns in the country. Various types of foods and fiber crops, vegetables and fruits, spices and condiments, etc. constitute some of the important crops grown in the country. India has three cropping seasons, Rabi, Kharif and Zed. Rabi crops are sown in winter from October to December and harvested in summer from April to June. Some of the important Rabi crops are wheat, barley, peas, gram and mustard. Though these crops are grown in large parts of India, states from the north and northwestern parts such as Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh are important for production of wheat and other rabi crops. Availability of precipitation during winter months due to, western temp due to the western temperate cyclones helps in the success of these crops. However, the success of the green revolution in Punjab Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and parts of Rajasthan has also been an important factor in the growth of the above mentioned rabi crops. Kharif crops are grown with the onset of monsoon in different parts of the country and these are harvested in September till October. Important crops grown during this season are paddy, maize, jowar, bajra, tur, moong, urad, cotton, jute, groundnut and soya bean. Some of the most important rice growing regions are Sam, West Bengal, coastal regions of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Maharashtra, particularly the Konkan coast along with Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Recently, paddy has also become an important crop of Punjab and Haryana. In states like Assam, West Bengal and Odisha, three crops of paddy are grown in a year. These are Oz, Amman and Boro. In between the Rabi and the Kharif seasons, there is a short season during summer months known as the Z season. Some of the crops produced during Z are watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber, vegetables and fodder crops. Sugarcane takes almost a year to grow. Major crops. A variety of food and non-food crops are grown in different parts of the country depending upon the variations in soil, climate and cultivation practices. Major crops grown in India are rice, wheat, millets, pulse, tea, coffee, sugarcane, oil, seeds, cotton and jute etc. Rice is the staple food crop of a majority of people in India. Our country is the second largest producer of rice in the world after China. It is a Kharif crop which requires high temperature above 25 degrees centigrade and high humidity with annual rainfall, with annual rainfall above 100 cm. In the areas of less rainfall, it grows with the help of irrigation. Rice is grown in plains of north and northeastern India, coastal areas and the deltaic regions. Development of dense network of canal irrigation and tube wells have made it possible to grow rice in areas of less rainfall such as Punjab, Haryana and western UP and parts of Rajasthan. Wheat. This is the second most important cereal crop. It is the main food crop in north and northwestern part of the country. This rabi crop requires a cool growing season and a bright sunshine at the time of ripening. It requires 50 to 75 cm of annual rainfall evenly distributed over the growing season. There are two important wheat growing zones in country, the Ganga Satlash Plains in northwest and black soil region of the Deccan. The major wheat producing states are Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan and parts of Madhya Pradesh. Millets. 
Jawar, Bajra and Ragi are the important millets grown in India. Though these are known as coarse grains, they have very high nutritional value. For example, Ragi is very rich in iron, calcium, other micronutrients and roughage. Jawar is the third most important food crop with respect to area and production. It is a rain-fed crop mostly grown in moist areas which hardly needs irrigation. Major Jawar producing states were Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh in 2011 and 12. Bajra grows well on sandy soils and shallow black soil. Major Bajra producing states were Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Haryana in 2011 and 12. Ragi is a crop of dry regions and grows well on red, black, sandy, loamy and shallow black soils. Major Ragi producing states are Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Jharkhand and Arunachal Pradesh. Maize. It is a crop which is used both as food and fodder. It is a kharif crop which requires temperature between 21 degrees to 27 degrees and grows well in old alluvial soil. In some states like Bihar, maize in, is grown in rabi season also. Use of modern inputs such as HYV seeds, fertilizers and irrigation have contributed to the increasing production of maize. Major maize producing states are Karnataka. Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Madhya Pradesh. Pulses India is the largest producer as well as the consumer of pulses in the world. These are major source of protein in vegetarian diet. Major pulses that are grown in India are Tur, Urad, Moong, Masoor, Peas and Gram. Can you distinguish which of these pulses are grown in Kharif season and which are grown in the Rabi season? Pulses need less moisture and survive even in dry conditions. Being leguminous crop, all these crops except Arhar helps in restoring soil fertility by fixing nitrogen from the air. Therefore, these are mostly grown in rotation with other crops. Major pulse producing states in India are Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Food crops other than grains Sugarcane is a tropical as well as subtropical crop. It grows well in hot and humid climate with a temperature of 21 degrees centigrade to 27 degrees centigrade and an annual rainfall between 75 cm and 100 cm. Irrigation is required in regions of low rainfall. It can be grown on a variety of soils and needs manual labor from sowing to harvesting. India is the second largest producer of sugarcane only after Brazil. It is the main source of sugar, gur, that is jaggery, khansari and molasses. The major sugar cane producing states are Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Bihar, Punjab and Haryana. Oil seeds. In 2008, India was the second largest producer of groundnut in the world after China. In rape season, India was third largest producer in the world after Canada and China in 2008. Different oil seeds are grown covering approximately 12% of total cropped area of the country. Main oil, seed oil seeds produced in India are groundnut, mustard, coconut, sesame, which is till, soya bean, castor seeds, cot cotton seeds, linseed and sunflower. Most of these are edible and used as cooking mediums. However, some of these are also used as raw material in production of soap, cosmetics and ointments. Groundnut is a kharif crop and accounts for about half of the major oil seeds produced in the country. Gujarat was the largest producer of groundnut followed by Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu in 2011 and 12. Linseed and mustard are rabi crops. Sesame is a kharif crop in north and rabi crop in south India. Castor seed is grown both as rabi and kharif crop. Tea cultivation is an example of plantation agriculture. It is also an important beverage crop introduced in India initially by the British. Today, most of the tea plantations are owned by Indians. The tea plant, the tea plant grows well in tropical and subtropical climates endowed with the deep and fertile well-drained soil rich in humus and organic matter. Tea bushes are warm and moist frost-free climate all through the year. Frequent showers evenly distributed over the year ensure continuous growth of tender leaves. Tea is a labor-intensive industry. It requires abundant, cheap and skilled labor. 
Tea is processed within the tea garden to restore its freshness. Major tea producing states are Assam, Hills of Darjeeling and Jalpaiguri district West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Apart from apart from these Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Meghalaya, Andhra Pradesh and Tripura are also tea producing states in the country. In 2008, India was the third largest producer of tea after China and Turkey. Coffee in 2000 is known in the world for its good quality. The Arabica variety initially brought from Yemen is produced in the country. This variety is in great demand all over the world. Initially, its cultivation was introduced on the Baba Budan hills and even today its cultivation is confined to the Nilgiri in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Horticulture crops In 2018, India was the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world after China. India is the producer of tropical as well as temperate fruits. Mangoes of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal, oranges of Nagpur and Chedapunji, Meghalaya, bananas of Kerala, Mizoram, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, Lichi and guava of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, pineapples of Meghalaya, grapes of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Maharashtra, apples, pears, apricots and walnuts of Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh are great, great demand the world over. India produces about 13% of the world's vegetables. It is an important producer of pea, cauliflower, onion, cabbage, tomato, brinjal and potato. Rubber is an equatorial crop but under special conditions it is also grown in tropical and subtropical areas. It requires moist and humid climate with rainfall of more than 200 cm and temperature above 25 degrees centigrade. Rubber is an important industrial raw material. It is mainly grown in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Garo Hills of Meghalaya. Fiber Crops Cotton, jute, hemp and natural silk are the four major fiber crops grown in India. The first three are derived from the crops grown in the soil. The latter is obtained from cocoons of the silkworms fed on green leaves, especially mulberry. Rearing of silkworms for the production of silk fiber is known as sericulture. Cotton. India is believed to be the original home of cotton plant. Cotton is one of the main raw materials for cotton textile industry in 2017. India was second largest producer of cotton after China. Cotton grows well in drier parts of the black cotton soil of the Deccan Plateau. It requires high temperature, light rainfall or irrigation, 210 frost-free days and bright sunshine for its growth. It is a kharif crop and requires 6 to 8 months to mature. Major cotton producing states are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. Jute. It is known as the golden fiber. Jute grows well on well-drained fertile soils in the flood plains where soils are renewed every year. High temperature is required during the time of growth. West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Odisha and Meghalaya are the major jute producing states. It is used in making gunny bags, mats, ropes, yarns, carpets and other artifacts. Due to its high cost, it is losing market to synthetic fibers and packing materials, particularly the nylon. Technological and institutional reforms. It was mentioned in the previous pages that agriculture has been practiced in India for thousands of years. Sustained uses of land without compatible techno institutional changes have hindered the pace of agricultural development. In spite of development of sources of irrigation, most of the farmers in large parts of the country still depend upon monsoon and natural fertility in order to carry on their agriculture. Growing population, this poses a serious challenge. Agriculture, which provides livelihood for more than 60% of its population, needs some serious technical and institutional reforms. Thus, collectivization, consolidation of holdings, cooperation, and abolition of zamindari etc were given priority to bring about institutional reforms in the country after independence. Land reform was the main focus of our first five-year plan. The right of inheritance has already led to fragmentation of land holdings necessitating consolidation of holdings. The laws of land reforms were enacted but the implementation was lacking or lukewarm. 
The government of India embarked upon introducing agriculture reforms to improve Indian agriculture in the 1960s and 1970s. The Green Revolution based on the use of package technology and the White Revolution Operation Flood were some of the strategies initiated to improve the lot of Indian agriculture. But this too led to the concentration of development in few selected areas. Therefore, in the 1980s and 1990s, a comprehensive land development program was initiated, which included both institutional and technical reforms. Provision for crop insurance against drought, flood cyclone, fire and disease, establishment of, of Grameen banks, cooperative societies and banks for providing loan facilities to the farmers at lower rates of interest were some important steps in this direction. Kisan credit card, personal accident insurance scheme are some other schemes introduced by the government of India for the benefit of the farmers. Moreover, special weather bulletins and agricultural programs for farmers were introduced on the radio and television. The government also announces minimum support price, remunerative and procurement prices for important crops to check the exploitation of farmers by speculators and middlemen. Bhudan Gramdan Mahatma Gandhi declared Vinoba Bhave as his spiritual hire. He also participated in Satyagraha as one of the foremost Satyagrahis. He was one of the world votaries of Gandhi's concept of Gram Swarajya. After Gandhiji's martyrdom, Vinoba Bhave undertook Padhyatra to spread Gandhiji's message covered almost the entire country. Once he was delivering a lecture at Pochampali in Andhra Pradesh, some poor landless villagers demanded some land for their economic well-being. Vinoba Bhave could not promise it to them immediately but assured them to talk to the government of India regarding provision of the land for them if they undertook cooperative farming. Suddenly, Sri Ramchandra Reddy stood up and offered 80 acres of land to be distributed among 80 landless villages. This act was known as Bhudan. Later, he travelled and introduced his ideas widely all over India. Some zamindars owners of many villages offered to distribute some villages among the landless. It was known as Gramdan. However, Many landowners chose to provide some parts of their land to the poor farmers due to fear of land sealing act. This Bhudan Gramdan movement initiated by Vinoba Bhave is also known as the bloodless revolution. Thank you. If you like this audio, do share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you once again.